are eating McDonald's french fries comparable to smoking cigarettes? There's a lot of talk on the internet right now with some compounds that are in french fries. And McDonald's gets picked on a lot, but in reality, pretty much all the fast food places are going to have the same issues. And it's sort of a three-headed monster, but the two components that are really focused on a lot right now are gonna be acrylamide and acrylin. And these are two known carcinogens. So we'll focus on the acrylamide first and then kind of talk more about the acrylin because that one's a little more complicated to talk about. And before we even dive into this, before we even talk about it a lot at all, I wanna read you a quote from the actual FDA about acrylamide. Acrylamide has been shown to cause cancer in humans, exposed to very high doses. And although there is no consistent epidemiological evidence on the effect of acrylamide from food consumption on cancer in humans, both the U.S. National Toxicology Program and the Joint Food and Agriculture Organization, World Health Organization Expert Committee of Food Additives, consider acrylamide to be a human health concern. It is not good stuff, but we also need to understand acrylamide and how it's formed. Because it's not like McDonald's french fries magically contain this carcinogen. It happens when you fry foods, and it's something that we should be concerned with. So let's take a little bit more of a deep dive and understand the actual problem here. After today's video, I put a link down below for the dog food that I feed my dogs. Yes, I'm advertising dog food on YouTube. I've hit rock bottom. No, in all seriousness, this is human grade dog food. We have four dogs. If you know me, you know we have four dogs. So I've got an 18 year old, a 15 year old, a 13 year old, and then a puppy. And Sundays is human grade dog food, which means it's dog food that humans could actually eat as well. So I always felt bad giving my dogs kibble while I'm eating good quality food. Before I had kids, the dogs were our kids, right? They still are our kids. Bottom line is, I really recommend you try it out. If you're worried about your own health and you're concerned with your own health, Maybe you should think about what you're feeding your dogs to. So it's human grade and it was formulated by a veterinarian that was tired of the same kind of thing I was tired of. So anyway, that link down below saves you 15% off Sunday's dog foods. So that link is in the top line of the description underneath this video. And again, when you support our sponsors, you allow us to keep doing what we are doing, which is creating amazing content for you. Let's dive into this whole cigarette thing. So cigarettes are problematic because of a number of things. There are multiple carcinogens that are in cigarette smoke. Okay, and yes, acrylamide is one of the sort of hallmark carcinogens in cigarette smoke. When you look at people that smoke cigarettes, they have three to five times the amount of acrylamide in their blood compared to people that don't smoke. Now, where the concern comes in is when you breathe cigarette smoke, acrylamide gets into your lungs and essentially permeates into your you know, bloodstream pretty darn quick, right? So the blood levels of acrylamide can be significantly higher. The other thing we have to note is that carcinogens are tricky because we, something can be a known carcinogen, but a human and a given human with a different genetic background and epigenetic, they're gonna respond to it different, right? Because cancer is tricky. Now, with this being said, it's hard to find the evidence that food consumption elevating acrylamide is truly carcinogenic as much. And I'm not taking a stance with McDonald's on this. I'm being very real. I will talk more about acrylamide, but what I wanna mention is that I think that French fries are significantly more problematic because the fact that they are a spongy vessel for rancid oils, right? So they're also a spongy vessel for pure calories. So that is problematic. Like that is where it's unrealistic. How much calories are we really, how many calories, I should say, are we really designed to take in in one sitting? And is an oil that's been sitting in a fryer for who knows how long, heated up and down, denaturing, how much of that are we really designed to take in? Because I don't even have as much of an issue straight up with pure seed oils coming out of like a fresh seed or a nut, right? I'm not afraid to eat almonds. I'm not afraid to eat sunflower seeds. I'm not afraid to have fresh olive oil or really even fresh sunflower oil to be real with you. But I do not wanna have an oil that's been sitting there oxidized and sitting out for a while, let alone one that's heated to however many hundred degrees and then back down. 
That seems problematic. Now, acrylamide is formed when you heat something, namely plant proteins, namely the amino asparagine. So this amino acid combined with some of the sugars that are in like a starch, okay, when you heat that up to a higher temperature, and the higher the temperature, the higher levels of acrylamide, you form this acrylamide. So are we designed to be consuming plant foods that are heated to a very high temperature? Probably not. Uh, there is some evidence that suggests that when you consume animal foods heated at a very high temperature, that the char can be problematic and a carcinogen too. So we, what I do on this channel, I try to play devil's advocate. I try to play it real, right? If you were to grill a steak and you were to char it, those, that char has what are called heterocyclic amines, which could be carcinogenic as well. So now that we've covered acrylamide, which is probably the one that's been talked about the longest, we need to touch on acrolin. Now, acrolin is another known carcinogen that really we're exposed to in small amounts or decent amounts in almost everything that we eat. So it has to do with the thermal degradation of glycerin. So when, we, when a food is broken down or when a food is heated or particularly fats heated, you form this acrolin. And this acrolin can definitely be an issue. As a matter of fact, when you're looking at frying oil, there is a lot more acrolin in frying oil, pound for pound per se, than there are in cigarettes. So yes, if you're talking specifically about acrolin, it might be worse to consume a frying oil that is completely denatured and oxidized. But what exactly does acrolin do? I mean, when you consume it or when it's ingested or just gets into your body, it's going to lead to potential oxidative stress and it's also gonna to lead to what is called ER stress. So it can actually damage the cells themselves. It can damage the reticulum. So with this, it can definitely be an issue. But is it the biggest issue with consuming French fries as we talked about before? Probably not. Where people might get a little bit mistaken or misinterpret some of the literature is that acrylin is gonna be significantly higher in the actual frying oil itself than the fried food. For example, it's like 37, hundred times higher in the oil, like the rapeseed frying oil itself, than it is per se in a fried donut. So yes, you're getting some of the oils that soak into the food, like when you fry french fries, you're getting those oils, but it's not like you're consuming a ton of just the pure oil. So it's much higher concentrations in the oil, which explains why foods that are a little more porous, like french fries or potato chips that are fried in these kinds of oils, they're gonna soak up like a sponge more of these oils, which increases the concentrations of the acrolin. For example, French fries have about 23 micrograms of acrolin per kilogram. Potato chips around the same, okay? And then when you look at something like a fruit, you're looking at less than one. And then when you look at some of these other cooked foods, you might be in the, like, a, like a fried turkey sausage patty, you might be in the ballpark of three to 10. Right, So definitely higher in French fries, but we're talking up to 200,000 micrograms per kilogram when you're talking about the actual oil. Not many people are consuming a kilogram of rapeseed oil that's been sitting in a frying pan, but just gives you context. Another thing we also have to be very realistic about is that there's other compounds when you actually distill things or cook things, like whiskey can have up to 11,000 micrograms per kilogram significantly higher than what you would get out of French fries. So with a lot of this, although the acrylamide and the acrolin are definitely known carcinogens and definitely problematic and definitely something that we should be concerned with, we also need to be real in the fact that the bigger issue is probably coming from the fact that you're taking in, once again, a rancid oil and a huge amount of calories. So with this, where is the issue? Like, are French fries worse than cigarettes? That's a very difficult one to answer. But let's take a look at what we can deal with in cigarettes. We have, I don't even know how many known carcinogens, but there's a lot. We have the cardiopulmonary issues that come as a result. We have the reduction in cardiorespiratory fitness that comes as a result. And that's been demonstrated in studies. Like, the more people smoke, the less their overall fitness level. Okay. We have the issues with uh, cigarette smoke impeding VO2 max. And VO2 max is one of the largest predictive indicators of health span or lifespan, I should say, which also is going to impact, of course, your lifespan when you're not breathing very well and you have low VO2 max. The list could go on and on there. When we take a look at French fries, I think it becomes a matter of excess. There are people that smoke moderate amounts that actually live long, healthy lives, and I'm not condoning smoking. 
Okay, but we also do know, and I had Dr. Joe Zendel, a cancer biologist on my channel recently, that there are people that are going to get triggered from the cancer perspective with cigarette smoke more than others. And I'm sure there are people from an acrylamide standpoint that might get triggered with french fries. I mean, it could happen, right? My point in saying this is that if you're consuming a high amount of rancid oils that are oxidized, that are known to be problematic, and you're consuming a high amount of calories, well, I mean, yes, you're going to have an increase in weight. You're going to have an increase in adipose tissue. You're likely going to have an increase in inflammation, especially if you're inactive. And that could actually be worse. If it's contributing to metabolic disease and it's contributing to obesity, I could argue that it could be worse than smoking. But how much are you doing? Someone that is eating healthy and smoking two packs a day, that's probably not gonna be worse than someone that has french fries once a day, but is otherwise decently healthy, right? The problem that we run into, once again with the french fries, is that we are consuming an adulterated oil and we're consuming a calorie bomb. Now, again, playing devil's advocate on the other side, when we look at actual micrograms per kilogram of acrylamide, this known carcinogen, French fries do have an alarmingly high amount. We're talking between 700 upwards to like 1500 in some cases, and obviously could be worse if they're fried longer. That is a lot. When you look at other processed foods, you're looking between 100 and maybe 700. Some breakfast cereals are really high, interestingly enough, because they're not typically heated. That's just kind of wild. And you can certainly find foods that are higher. The point is, is that French fries are high up on that list. Now, Paul Saladino had come on my channel, and Paul and I are friendly. We disagree on things. We certainly do. In fact, we had some disagreements while we were filming, but we still take each other for, you know, what we are, right? Who we are. Uh, and he mentioned this, talking about, like, McDonald's french fries having something in a pack of Marlboros. And although some of it might have been maybe exaggerated a little bit, he had a point. I brought these as a prop because um, I've had them in my backpack the last few days that I've been in Los Angeles and I'm always self-conscious. Somebody be like, what are you walking around with Marlboros for? But this is interesting. It's, a, it's an illustration for people because I came across some really interesting studies on seed oils and how they're connected with cigarettes. And so the idea here is that if you look at seed oils when you cook them, when you heat them, and specifically you look at french fries, like at McDonald's or In-N-Out or any fast food joint, they're gonna cook in seed oils. McDonald's french fries have 19 ingredients and they cook in four different types of seed oils, canola, soybean, hydrogenated soybean oil, et cetera. And there was, there's been multiple studies looking at this, but one specifically looked at seed oils and the amount of toxic lipid oxidation byproducts when you make French fries out of them, right? There's 4-H&E, which is harmful for humans, but there's also acrolein and alpha-beta unsaturated aldehydes. And they looked at the amount of alpha-beta unsaturated aldehydes in 152 grams of French fries, which is a large fries from McDonald's or In-N-Out, and there's the same amount of these toxic chemicals, which are group 2A carcinogens from the WHO that you find in 25 cigarettes. So the, hmm. the striking thing that I wanted to tell you is that if you, I know you don't think this, but if someone thinks that seed oils are benign, mm -hmm. consider the fact that eating a large fries from In-N-Out or McDonald's contains the same amount of these toxic chemicals as a pack of cigarettes. That is, we are consuming something on a regular basis that we are addicted to that is a known carcinogen. And in California, we have to have a Prop 65 warning on uh, anything that could be a known carcinogen. And I'll use an example. Like you walk into a fast food place, they're gonna have a Prop 65 warning. It doesn't notate specifically what it's for, but in a fast food place, you could probably argue it's probably because of the acrylamide. A lot of other restaurants are gonna have them too. Like Wendy's, Jack in the Box, they're going to have high levels of acrylamide. McDonald's is just probably the most consumed french fries. So how do you get around this? Like, what do you do? I mean, first and foremost, I think you can reduce the risk of it if you were to just air fry french fries. Okay, because anytime you immerse in a water or immerse in an oil, the temperature is going to be much hotter, right? It's going to saturate more. If you air fry, it is still exposed to those high temperatures, but the levels of acrylamide are probably going to be lower, but you're also not bringing in those adulterated oils, right? You're not bringing in oils that, again, could be bad, could be okay, but they're still rancid, right? So you're still bringing in these oxidized oils. 
that's where we run into an issue. So should we exercise best efforts to reduce acrylamide? 100%. Just like if you were to look at the literature that says that aspartame is a carcinogen. It means, hey, this doesn't necessarily mean it's going to cause cancer, but it is a potential concern that needs more investigation. And again, with what the FDA had noted and even the WHO, and I know some people don't trust those organizations, and I get it, I get it. But the point is that even they said acrylamide is a human health concern. So what are we going to do about this? Do we throw all the French fries in the world away? No. I hate to break it to you, but it probably comes down to a moderation thing. We're exposed to carcinogens. When we wake up in the morning, we take a big breath of what we think is fresh air. We're exposed to things. I don't think there's any way around it, but it is our job to live a healthier lifestyle and upregulate our body's defense systems by being strong, by working out, by having a good cardiovascular system, by eating a healthy diet, and kind of following as much of an 80-20 rule as you can. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel. I'll see you tomorrow.